Hey everybody, it's Rob from The Rant, and I'm bringing you another 5-minute review. This time on 5-minute reviews, we're going to be talking about Dragon Ball Xenoverse. The Dragon Ball games have been around since the mid-90s. They made a ton of them. They've all kind of been a cross between an action game and a fighting game. Some were a little bit more hardcore towards the fighting game genre, and those I really loved. The ones that were closer to the action titles, eh, they kind of screwed up. Like the Tenkaichi series, I'm pretty sure everybody will agree, was not the best series in the world. Now, the current game, Xenoverse, is based off the Tenkaichi ones. Now, nobody freak out, okay? They fixed the issues. For instance, the lock-on system actually works. Your character doesn't get screwed on movement when he's locked on to an enemy or when he's not locked on to an enemy. You have full control over movement at all times. You can da speed dash whenever you want to. You can slow it down and just do precise little sidesteps whenever you want to. So, A plus for that. Graphics, they did the same thing that they always do, cell shading. That being said, they cleaned it up a little bit. The lines are crispier, and there's an actual light reflection system going on in there. So that is pretty solid. Graphics are satisfying. They follow the original anime, and they cleaned them up. So, good stuff there. Gameplay, the controls are simple, really easy to master. The combo system is basically just like five hits on square, five hits on triangle. So it's a pretty simple combo system, and it's the exact same combo system for every character. Now granted, what they do when you hit square and triangle kind of changes a little bit, but they all are roughly the same thing, making it really easy to just pick a character and actually get in there and mix it up, which is nice, because there's like 40 characters in the game, and it would be a real pain in the ass to try and master all those characters, because let's face it, in a game like this, it's based on you know love from fans and probably not so much new people to the series most of us would want to play with every character and if you can't get decent with every character then it's disappointing and disheartening and it makes you lose interest so they gave you a simple combo system personally i i'm one of those weirdos that would have loved to have a really hardcore combo system for each character but i can understand the reasons why they made it nice and simple that being said, I think it includes a larger audience and actually does help the game in general to have a simple combo system. Uh, the game itself has online features just every which way. Now, if you're like me, that's usually a little bit of a red flag. You'll be like, ah, crap, it's, it's so online. Well, guess what? It's a bonus in this one. I know, coming from me, that's a little weird. But the game is not dependent on all the online features. They're just extras. Like, if you want to, you can disconnect your console from the internet and still play the game and still do everything that you want to do without any real problems. So, that right there is a bonus to me. I mean, if uh, I can run all the side missions. They're called parallel quests. I can do them solo, or if I want to, I can bring my buddy in and have him enjoy the rewards of beating up a really hard mission too, which is nice. I like being able to include friends in, in gameplay, especially if they're having trouble or I'm having trouble, then we help each other out. It's what the real basis of online gaming is supposed to be. Now, <clears throat> the game has decent graphics, as I said. They cleaned up the controls, as I said. The online options, for once, are actually a bonus. So that's pretty cool. The amount of characters, there's a ton of them, including a lot of the fan favorites. So that's a bonus. Uh, the story mode itself is, as far as I'm aware, a completely unique story created just for this game. It's actually not ripping off any of the movies or the TV series or anything like that. So, again, a bonus. Now, the game itself is a Dragon Ball... We'll call it like a fan work if you want. Because essentially, you get to make your own character at the start of it. Your own custom character. You can pull in all of the powers and abilities that you wanted from every other character in the game. Like if you want the final shine attack that Vegeta has in Super Saiyan 4 mode, you can get that skill and give it to your character. Now granted, you're going to have to work for it, but it is there. So, after all the things I've mentioned... I'm giving this title a solid 4.2 out of 5. Now, I know that's a little high for this type of game, but I feel like they didn't really do anything wrong in this one. I feel like this one was a good balance between a lot of the different aspects from the older games. So, that being said, Dragon Ball Xenoverse, 4.2 out of 5, give it a look-see.
I'm Rob, this has been a 5 minute review, and before I go, please remember to check out our channel, The Rant. We got lots of great stuff on there. We have a really cool series called Versus that's brought to you by Josh. We have other 5 minute reviews. We have our normal podcast, The Rant. We do game streams every Saturday at 3 o'clock. And please, please, check out my buddy Josh's channel, Josh's Opinion. It's a magical place. I'll leave a link for it down in the description. I'm Rob, and it's been fun.